Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today on Hungry Hippo, we are going to be making um, potato soup in our slow cooker. However, there is some steps at the end that have to be done on the stove and then added into the crock pot. Um, I've experimented and I've researched online and there's just no real way to make the end cream sauce for the soup in the crock pot. You have to make like a roux over here and then add it in. Um, but it's still really simple. The first part of the recipe is just dump in the crock pot and cook. And then you do a real simple roux over here and you add it in. So let's go over what you need. You need two pounds of potatoes. Yukon gold are the best, but you can use any kind that you guys like. We leave our peels on because Keith and I do like the peels of the potatoes. You need 10 slices of pre-cooked crumbled bacon. You need one medium white onion or sweet onion, finely chopped. I only use half of the onion because Keith is not a fan of um, onions or heavily onion flavored food. So I only use half, but the original recipe called for the whole onion. You need garlic. You can use garlic powder, um, cloves, whatever you have. Um, I'll put the Cook's Thesaurus down in the description so you can look, look it up if you're using something other than powder. You need parsley flakes, salt and pepper. You need chicken broth. You can use bouillon or pre-made broth, whatever you guys like to do. And that's all we're going to need um, now for this step. And then tomorrow evening when we make the roux, we're going to need flour, one can of evaporated milk. You can use heavy cream instead, but heavy cream is very fattening and has a lot of calories, so I just try to get the fat-free evaporated milk instead. They, they taste the same, that this is just as good. And you need chives, and set aside, um, after you take your 10 slices out, set aside the rest of your bacon. You're gonna crumble that up and put it on top tomorrow, and then you'll need shredded cheese. So, what I first I do is I cook my bacon in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 degrees, and halfway through I turn my pan so it cooks evenly. I get that started first. Then I, um, I actually bring in our store scale and disinfect it and lay uh, saran wrap on it and weigh out two pounds of potatoes. I usually go to like two and a half pounds. I get as close as I can. I keep adding potatoes on the scale until I'm at two or over two. And then I chop those up and I chop up my onions and I get everything else ready to go. And usually my bacon is uh, done before I'm ready with everything done here and it can sit on paper towels and um, get degreasified. All right, so what you do, you dump your potatoes in. Oh, I'm sorry. You will also need butter tomorrow night, but we'll go over that tomorrow night. That was not a necessity tonight, but you do need um, four tablespoons of butter for this recipe. You can see my cheat sheet here. Um, this is a recipe I'm still playing with and adjusting for Keith and I's taste. But we're pretty happy with what I'm showing you here. Should be the final time I play around with it for our taste bud enjoyment. I'm just dumping bacon on the table. All right, so then the garlic calls for three fourths of a teaspoon, but we really like garlic. Um, garlic flavoring, garlic in our food, so I use a whole teaspoon. It's a little heavy, so if you're not big on garlic, use the three-fourths teaspoon or the equivalent of whatever other type you're using. When you research on Cook's thesaurus, you need a tablespoon of parsley, and it just says salt and pepper to taste, so I just kind of eyeball that. You can add salt and pepper when you actually sit down to eat, too taste so that's fine um, I'm using bouillon powdered bouillon for my chicken broth this is only two cups so I had to bring over another cup so I have three look at me making messes and then I need four and a half teaspoons of this um, I know that most people get either boiling water or hot water and put their bouillon in it and mix it so that it's an actual broth before you dump it in your food I just don't. Um, I figure as it's cooking and it will blend in and mix in. Dun, 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 dun. 
I said three and a half, right? We're getting more ready. Okay. So then this is pretty much ready. You just want to kind of eyeball it. If you're going a little over the two pounds of potatoes, your, your broth might not cover all your food. That's what it looks like. Beautiful. It already smells delicious. So if your broth isn't over your food, you can add more broth or more water. Um, but you do want it covered. You want water over the top. You want it completely covered. So then I will put this in the refrigerator overnight. All these nice flavors will start mingling and mixing and marinating. And tomorrow I will cook it on low heat for six to eight hours. And then I will um, come back on camera with you guys and show you how to add the roux so that you have the cream sauce and the potatoes and then um, how I serve it. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys. It's Star. It is the next day, magic of editing. It's just a couple seconds later for you guys. So the potato soup has been um, on low on the crock pot all day. And we're about to make the roux over here on the stove. Four tablespoons of butter. You want to put it on medium heat. When the butter's melted, you add one third cup of flour and you'll whisk them together. And when they're mixed, you'll add in your evaporated milk and turn the heat down to low and just keep, you can get a whisk or a fork. I like using a fork, but you can use a whisk. Um, so once the butter's melted, you mix the flour in, then you add the evaporated milk, turn it on low and just keep stirring it or whisking it until it's really super thick. You can see that I'm trying to hurry it along by mushing it, but now it's on that fur. So now we're going to add in the flour. I like to just add a little bit at a time and mix. As I go. Okay, and now we're going to dump in the evaporated milk. Whisk it really good so that the thick roux paste gets mixed in with the milk. I still got chunks. Once you get all the chunks out is when uh, I turn it on low and just keep simmering it until it gets thick. chunks are out mostly good enough so I'll just turn it down we have a gas stove so I'll just keep doing this until it is thick all right guys you see how it's getting thick thickening thickening so we're going to take it over to the crock pot so there is the soup that's been cooking all day now we're going to add this roux to it Then what I like to do, I mix it in pretty good. I try to get as much of it out of here as I can. See how it's nice and thick. And then I mix it in. And then what I like to do, I take And I fill this little tiny pot up most of the way with the soup. And then I mash the potatoes. This helps make your um, 
cream sauce on the soup and the broth a little bit thicker. Add them back in. Mix it all together. See how it still looks a little thin? I'm gonna do like another couple spoonfuls. Then I'll stir those back in. Then you want to um, put the lid back on and let it continue to cook on low for another 20 minutes and then it should be ready to eat. If it's too thick at that point, you can always add more chicken broth to it. And if it gets too thin, you can always mash more potatoes and throw them back in. Um, I've never had to do either of those, usually just doing this little bit of mashing and then letting it simmer for another 20 minutes in the crock pot. It's real nice um, texture, just like the right amount of thickness. So it will thicken as it cooks. That's why you add the additional 20 minutes of cooking time after adding this. Got some roux out there. But yeah, now we'll just let it simmer for 20 minutes and then um, I will show you how I serve it after I get a bowl out. Hey guys, I just wanted to add real quick, if you wanted to make a double batch of this or more and freeze extra for later, just make sure that you take it out of the crock pot, the portions that you wanna freeze before you add in the milk roux mixture. That does not freeze and thaw back out well at all. So you just wanna get the chicken broth and bacon and potato portion from the crock pot first, take out what you wanna freeze and then add in the roux. So I'm just going to show you real quick how I top off our bowls of soup once they're done. I have the extra pieces of bacon last, that were pre-cooked last night, and I just crumble some in, like so. You can add as little or as much as you'd like. Some people like a lot of bacon. Then I sprinkle on a little bit of cheese. And then just for a hint of flavor and just to look pretty, I add some dried chives. Now additionally, you can also stir in a dollop of sour cream, which will actually make it even thicker yet if you like a thicker soup and if you like sour cream. Um, you can mix a dollop of that in and then top it off as I am and it will taste like a baked potato with all the fixings. But we don't do the sour cream part, we just do that. And then you can have sandwiches on the side or just eat the soup. Let me know down below if you try this recipe and if you like it. If you have a similar or different potato soup recipe, let me know. I always like to try new things. Um, this is the second or third time I've made this particular recipe and I've been playing with it. So I do like to play around in the kitchen. It is always fun to try new things. Do me a favor and smash that like button if you would. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys have a good night.